Welcome to It's All Relative. I'm Josh. And I'm Timothy. What's good? And we're back with episode six. What's good, my man? Man, I'm doing well. The doing week well. is good. Oh, except aside from being snowed in. Yes, we just got hit with our first snowstorm this year. Yeah, we did. Uh, it was a pretty big one. Yeah, they Frosty the Snowman just poured like snow everywhere. Right. I think, um, what do you think? Definitely over a foot. Definitely right. over yeah, a foot. Definitely Although they were foot. saying that it was supposed to be upwards of 16. Uh-huh. Even like around our area was supposed to be like closer to 16. So, Really? Yeah. I didn't get a chance to measure it, but um, I know that uh, it was pretty deep. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Pretty deep, so. And with that being said, the uh, the countdown to Christmas has begun. Oh, yay. Christmas is... Uh, Christmas is, is here. It? Less than a week away. Less than a week Less away. Less than a week. You, um... You have a few favorite Christmas movies or traditions or oh, quite a things you enjoy about Christmas? Quite a number of them. We watched two specific movies. Okay. Well, maybe three. Home Alone 1. Okay. Home Alone 2. Okay. And Die Hard. And like, Die Hard. <laughs> your boy is over here. He knows. That's such he a... Knows. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, I have this conversation with my wife often, too. Okay. And I feel like many people do because... Uh, a lot of people consider Die Hard a Christmas movie. It very much is. Right? It very much is. Which is very cool. Much is. That is cool. Um, yeah, me and myself, I love my absolute favorite Christmas movie is uh, The First Home Alone. The First Home Alone? And uh, I really enjoy Elf. Elf? Okay. Yeah, what do you like about Elf? I don't know. I'm usually not a big Will Ferrell fan, but um, I thought he did such a good job in that movie. I feel like um, anything that's in New York City around Christmas time, is uh, it always makes... New York City look really nice. It's very know, true. It's very true. They they come with it. They bring the entire entourage to make New York City look beautiful Absolutely. every year. It's almost like it's a thing that they expect. Yeah. So they have to come with it. Right. It's in a lot of Christmas movies. Hold on. Or it takes place. New York City. New York City. Yeah. Let me let me throw one thing at you about movies. So uh, I've been watching uh, some of the latest uh, AVGN, the Angry Video Game Nerd. I'm not sure if you know him, mm-hmm. but... Uh, He's like a crazy dude, okay. or he used to be anyways, or he portrayed one. Right on. But uh, one of the previous episodes that he just had recently was about another Christmas movie that he was proposing because like the entire movie is Christmas themed. And that is the Batman in 1992, the 92 Batman. Uh, yeah. Michael Keaton? Michael Keaton. Was it Michael Keaton? I think it uh. is. Yeah, but he was saying, I need to rewatch the movie, obviously, but... The yeah, entire theme of the of the entire movie mm. is more Christmas. And in fact, he said it's more Christmas than Die Hard. Really? Yeah. He was saying it because in the very beginning, it's like a couple of days before Christmas. And the penguin, oh, that's mm-hmm. right. The penguin is doing like all of this crazy stuff to mm-hmm. try and ruin Christmas. Mm-hmm. And he's working with some other dude that's like trying to extort money through <laughs> all of it. And like even like one of the uh, the bad guys that pops out on screen is like, you know, through a present, through like one of the big, you know, like Christmas lightings that they have, like mm-hmm. the one in New York. Right, right. Yeah, like so they're having like this Christmas lighting and they have like this big package and the enemy comes out and is like, yo, we're, we're coming here to ruin it. And, you know, they shoot like <laughs> they shoot somebody there. Oh, that's and crazy. then even at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. you know, they're all they just sit there and they're in the car. Uh, Batman and the butler mm-hmm. are in the car and they basically just say, you know, have a happy Christmas. Right. Good night. There are a lot of Christmas movies, or a lot of movies that do have um, Christmas references to right. them, um, and may not necessarily be uh, a Christmas movie. You know, oh, okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Christmas is just the background of it, right? I like, uh, I enjoy um, the first uh, Meet the Parents. Meet the Parents. Oh and wow! And that was around Christmas time. That's true. So, That's very true. You know what I'm saying? So, right, right, right. Not a Christmas movie, but um, Christmas referenced. For okay. Sure. Yeah, definitely Christmas. Rest. It has to be Christmas. Bro. So, yeah. So Christmas coming up soon. Mm-hmm. Going to be a good time. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's get into it, my man. Today's subject is one that uh, resonates with a high percentage of people, at least through a certain time or part in their lives. Okay. Okay. Uh, that time usually being at a younger age, but for, uh, for a big percentage of people, uh, the love for this You know, they carry on through their whole life. Okay. You know, I myself mm, consider, I I would say that I'm a lifetime fan, but I use the word lifetime loosely. Loosely. 
So you're in and out on it. Simply because there was a period of time where um, I did fall off for a okay. year or two. But our guest today, on the other hand, is the only person I know that has been a loyal fan from the beginning. Like I said, there's not many people that come to mind that share the same excitement and knowledge about today's topic as I do. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to have this man on. Uh, He's a good friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, Cody Wood. Good evening, wrestling fans. Welcome. Welcome, Cody. I'm doing doing? good. Thanks for having me on the show tonight. Oh, thank you for coming, brother. It's not a problem. Not a problem. Anytime to talk about some wrestling, I'm always in. Yeah, yeah, okay. bro. So Thanks. you're the wrestling aficionado over here. Nah, I wouldn't go that far, but I'm a enthusiast. I okay. Love it. Connoisseur at least, right? Yeah. Okay. I we connoisseur we level. Call, I guess we could call it that. Yeah, man. All right. But no, definitely something I've enjoyed for a long time. Okay. How long, if I may ask? Uh, Well, I know Josh has said lifelong, but I faded, like, I faded in and out. We all have our times, rough periods. Some things are better than others. Right, right. But when did you when did you start getting into wrestling? I had to say probably like 98, 99. Okay. I remember a little bit of the wars. All right. I remember seeing that one episode of Nitro where, uh, I believe it was Nitro, where McMahon was saying that he bought it. Shane, come on. It's not the it, McMahon is on the bill, but it's not, it's not Vince. It's Shane. <laughs> it's Shane. I remember it's seeing Shane. that. Losing Shane my mind. <laughs> All right. I remember some of the attitude there, you know, Stone Cold, the product, yeah. all that time frame. Okay. And I fell off for a couple of years and, uh, the wife and a buddy of mine got me back into it, took me to a live show. That's what really got me back into it. Okay, the live show brought you back? You got to see everything as it happens? The feel of the crowd. Every, there's nothing like a live wrestling show. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I want to get into that topic uh, a little later. Yeah, but well, before we start, I just want to say um, it did happen earlier this month, but I think uh, being a wrestling uh, episode, we should mention that on December 2nd, Pat Patterson passed oh, away wow. and he was 79 uh he, rest in peace yeah he worked for wwe as mm-hmm. a creative consultant and producer he was the first ever wwe intercontinental champion wow and he was the creator of the royal rumble match which is pretty cool yeah lots of good royal rumbles lots of good yeah, yeah. he was inducted into the hall of fame in 96 okay so fairly um, long ago yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys remember the first time you ever saw him, or do you guys have any memories involving him? Patterson and Briscoe always running in on matches. Vince is Stooges, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how I remember it, too. Yeah. The Vince Stooge. And fools. All right. You want to tell us a little bit about it? What you really liked about it? Uh, well, a lot of the old-time wrestling I like that, I'm kind of, well, no, I can't say old-time wrestling's been around for a long time, but mm-hmm. I'm kind of spotty on a lot of the old stuff. Like, if you... If, I'll remember it if it's brought up in conversation. Oh, yeah, this. I remember. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I just always remember them running in whenever he needed some kind of backup. Okay. Same with yeah. Shane. You had the Mean Street Posse. Oh, my with God. <laughs> it was basically the Mean Street because Shane didn't know what the hell he was doing. It was never going to be a one-on-one with the McMahon. No, family. no, it wasn't. Actually, yo, that's actually very true. They've always had like some sort of backup crew or like they had some sort of plot or something. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Always, always scheming. Oh my God. <laughs> Stephanie was pretty awful with that too. That, Shout out. Goes, yeah. with, goes with the name. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So do you remember, um, your first match or the first time like seeing wrestling on TV? Like not, uh, we're going to steer away from the live, uh, events for now. Okay. Um, so focus more so on the, the older stuff or the past, the stuff in the past. But do you remember your first match or first, uh, you know, even person that you saw? Uh, first match, not really, but I remember the first person I remember seeing that really like shocked me and wowed me. And I was like, oh, this guy was uh, probably Kane. Kane? Yeah. Okay. Kane, All nice. Right. Back, Other in, take back in, um, let's see, the... Old school Kane. Yeah, correct, back right? back in the day when he had the when he had the voice changer that he used on his throat. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, nice. OG Kane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Kane back then too. Yeah. That's cool. So, um, Monday Night Wars. Let's let's talk about that. You you remember the Monday Night Wars? I do vaguely. Vaguely. Okay. Okay. 
you know, as most people know, but that was uh, the time when it was WCW versus WWF every Monday night. Yeah, every Monday night. Every yeah. Monday night. One after the other. Be flipping back and forth. Yeah. Flipping back and forth. This, yeah. Nah, this match ain't going to be good. Yeah, go exactly. Let me go check out the other side. See what they got going on. <laughs> oh, 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 let me see where this goes. Yeah. Flip back. Flip back, right? Yeah, I oh, think no. the. Uh, I think that was a great period for wrestling fans. It, too, it was. It's still legendary. That. That's why we're talking about it now. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to remember, actually. I think um, the first time with the Monday Night Wars going back and forth, um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. I think the first person, because it wasn't a match, like when I had, when I had flipped on, I remember seeing um, Chris Benoit. Oh, Chris walking Chris out. Benoit. WCW days, but this was way back when um he he was walking out uh, on stage and he ended up getting attacked or jumped by the uh, uh, members of Raven's Flock. Wow! So it was back in the day, but um that's well, how far it goes back for you. Yeah, let that me I ask remember. You, let me ask you a question about Benoit. Then, mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm not gonna ask the obvious question. I'm gonna ask, why did you like him? What drew you to him? Chris Benoit, man, that dude was an animal. Totally dude. agree. He just, you couldn't kill him. Yeah. You never you couldn't do, and, it, and you always wanted to. I think that's what a lot of people like, too. They're like, all right, who's going to finally take down Benoit? Yeah, yeah man. He was he'll, intense. He'll, he'll, he'll put his body through Everything. anything to take care of you. Right, right. Yeah, wow. that cross face crippler was killer. Oh, stretch him out. I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> man. When he would lock that in, yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Most, most, everyone's tapping. Wow. Best Royal Rumble. I think he entered number one. Uh huh. He won it. And he took care of everybody. Yeah, so people may Jesus. have their own opinions and whatnot about Chris Benoit, but uh, for us and Just for, look at the wrestling career. Yeah, for us. Oh, okay. So you look at the wrestling career. For us and That's for true. here, shout out Chris Benoit. Sh shout outs to Benoit. Yes. This next question, actually, uh, let's let's kick it to both of you. Um, do you guys have maybe, you know, top three favorite wrestlers or just one You want to go particular? first? Is that like modern... Any, let's 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 go anywhere. Uh, let me see. I guess I guess we'll go. I, I guess we'll hit that top three. Okay. If okay. I had to pick any, uh, I think Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero. Definitely, he was a great technician. Okay, bless. Let me nice. see. We'll get we'll get a technician. Uh, let's see. Let me think of another one. Let me think of like a powerhouse. Who who's great as a powerhouse? Taz comes to mind. Okay. Taz. Taz, Taz ECW classic. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Suplex anybody. Yeah. <laughs> and then number three. And then a new up and comer. Got to go with the boy Darby Allen. Oh, okay. Shout, Shout out to Darby Allen. Darby Allen. Tell great. me a little bit about him. He's another one. He'll put his body through anything to try and get the win. So he's on like you. a he's like a Benoit type. In that aspect, yeah, that he'll do anything to try and get the win. Body okay. body to the wind, brisk, no risk. Wow. Relentless. Okay. Tattooed on the back of his neck. Uh, <laughs> he's just crazy, man. Seen him a couple times live. Seen him. Uh, he's on AEW now. Okay. Shout out AEW. You're gonna have to tell me a little bit more about this AEW later too. Yeah, we're gonna get into yeah. that in a little bit. Let me get. Let me give you my top three. Or they're all old school, obviously. So, are you ready for it though? Oh, you got hit it. So, number three. These are all obvious, but number three for me would be Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Icon. DTA 316. There you mm -hmm. go. There you go. Now, are you ready for the number two? Hit it. The number two is The Rock. The Most second electrifying. icon. Yeah. Most electrifying, right? That's awesome. It. All right. And now number three, Goldberg. Ooh. I got... We're going to touch on him in a little bit. Oh, okay. I got, I got a little... Uh, yeah, I got something I want to talk about. Okay. If, in a little if, bit, if it's but, good or if it's bad, it doesn't even but, matter. You, yeah. you can't... Those were good three choices. Yeah, though, for sure. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah, yeah. I got no arguments. I got some. I got some conversation though. No okay, arguments. yeah. What's the conversation? You want to come with it? Goldberg's streak was exaggerated. You think? I oh. <laughs> <laughs> thought it was exaggerated. Well, let it be exaggerated. It has to be for the story, though. Why do you think it's exaggerated? Though? I, I just, I just, I just think I don't think it was. But, you don't but, think uh, he was all well, that? Well, not really. Oh man, tell so, you have to but, say well, why. Back in the day, more so than. Than his return. Oh, oh, the return. We don't talk about the return. Definitely, we don't talk about the return. Oh, all right. That but, fell off. But then, uh, yeah, I mean, him and uh, 
DDP, what was it, Halloween Havoc 98? That yeah, was great I think it was, match, think it was 98. Yeah. That, that, was, that was a great match. Exactly. DDP, another great? Yep. That's yeah. another great. For sure. Yeah. So if if I had to pick, um, I don't know, top three, that's really tough. But um, this is no particular order. To, so it it's, may throw you off, may throw everyone off. But uh, like I said, no particular order. I'm going to go first with Chris Jericho. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh, from the beginning, man, mm-hmm. I've always been a fan. Back in WCW, Lionheart, ECW, Lionheart. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, second, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Xbox. Oh, okay, Xbox. Yeah, and I want to touch on him. Xbox, a little one, two, three kid. Yes, yeah. yes. I want to touch on him in a little bit too. My wife loves one, two, three kid. But that not at, the fresh, the, the fresh that uh. That character, or not so much Xbox. Well, she just, remembers or... him from watching wrestling. Okay, when the one, two, three kid was right. that dude. Uh, okay, yeah. But Xbox, I feel like Xbox made him like who he is. Like he just like bloomed into him like a flower oh, into no, that definitely. persona. He was, yeah, he was one of my first um, times too. I remember because back in the day when um it was the WCW and WWF at the time um. I was really more um, a WCW fan. See, so me too. Me I would too. lean. I would. I would definitely do the flip backs, right. but I would concentrate more on WCW, right? But then there got to a point where I kind of, I mean, certain things about the WWF caught my eye, and uh, things that got uh, I-, I thought were were better, mm-hmm. you know. And I remember uh, one of the matches in particular that I saw, it was back when um, there was the the Rock and the Nation. Okay. And it was against, um, and, you know, they were having their beef with DX. Mm-hmm. The match that I saw was um, X-Pac versus The Rock. And it was, oh. it was one of the best matches. Like, I don't know, it was so different compared to, like, the normal WCW matches. Right. And I remember watching this and thinking, like, oh, man. Man, like this is, you know, maybe I should watch a little more, more of it. Yeah, it's, it's like teasing you. It's like, see, see what we have over so, here. Like I said, he's he's definitely one of my favorites, and I don't know, like one of the third ones. Uh, okay, I'll throw number out. one, number one. You gotta get do number two first. No, no, no that was Jericho. Oh, that was Jericho. Xbox. Okay, Xbox. Jericho, my bad. Xbox. Um, number, number one. one. I'm bad. waiting. I'm waiting. What's what's up? I would go older, but I guess I'm gonna just go with someone who's. More He's dancing present, over here. It has to be good. Right now, I'm going to go with Adam Cole. Boom. Oh, wow. Hey, okay. <laughs> you got to dap it up if you're going to boom like that. I knew Come it. On. Yeah. I knew it. Wow. That's you, my dude. You got to tell why. Oh, man. I love him. He's got skill. I've seen him um, in real life, like when we touch on the live shows and whatnot. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about I like that, how you both were talking because um, as much as I live close to uh, WCW, I only went like once or twice every every so often. So it's actually kind of nice to hear from you guys. So you actually have the live experience, and it it, it basically influenced why you think a particular character is your favorite. So it'd be interesting to hear about that. It's not just a TV show, right? 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 Yeah. Like, you guys, um. So not focusing on a particular wrestler right now, but um, match-wise, do you guys have a favorite match or one that you guys uh, remember in particular seeing on TV that was one that you'll remember forever? I do have one, but I don't remember at what time. Well, it was basically The Rock versus Stone Cold. Okay. Yeah. That, that was some of my absolute favorites right there, or at least like just the entire storyline where they're always getting set up <laughs> to go at it after each other and everything. Their feud was um was one of the best ones. It and was. I don't think there's anybody that took a stunner better than the, the, rock. the rock. Yo, I remember kid, I remember so kids crazy. in middle school were trying to hit everybody with stunners. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Nobody everybody could take was hot it like with the that. rock. Right. You know, that was or like the people's elbow and everything too. Oh yeah. yeah, man. Iconic. Yeah. Rock and Stone Cold. Yeah, that was a great time. Yeah. Oh, I I do have some I guess a little bit special too that I watched uh, a couple days ago. The uh for Stone Cold at least. Uh I was watching I was listening to I think he did like a podcast of his own where he was talking about how he didn't want to have like a match set up with Hulk Hogan. 
like it was is a very interesting uh like eight minute podcast hmm. and he was basically saying like he just didn't want to get in into terry's way you know what i mean he didn't want to be like part of that persona because he saw his star to be like as big as him or if not bigger now is this back in the day he didn't this, want to or, or like no yeah this was back in the day so he didn't like, want to like, fight he, he wouldn't want to fight him have a match back in the day right, right? he didn't okay. want to he didn't want to have a match set up or like a storyline pushed in the way of going against his hollywood you know hogan okay type of thing because he thought that Going against like Hollywood Hulk Hogan, yeah, or going against because I, di- I didn't, I didn't hear Hollywood, that, so. Hollywood, Hulk Hollywood Hogan. Hogan, yeah, Hollywood Hogan, which is a little bit different, but it's still Hogan, either yeah, way, you know what I mean. So he didn't want to have a match set up like that because he thought that his ego and Terry's ego would just clash and it wouldn't make for a good storyline, good storyline, right. Well, Hollywood Hogan had beefs and storylines with The Rock, I know, right? right? Exactly, and, exactly, and with um. Who else was, or was it just the Rock? Well, you had that that big that WrestleMania match. I don't recall the number. It was Rock and uh, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. Right, right, right. And then at the end, you know, they were like shaking hands, and he was and Hogan was like tapping him on the shoulder and everything. That's what Stone Cold didn't want. He took his own path. Yeah, maybe he could. He just couldn't have seen that happening. Exactly, he couldn't see it happening. But The Rock was like, all right, let's do it, you know, because The Rock took it in a different way. He was like, this is, you know, I'm electrifying. He's electrifying. Let's go. Dream match. You know? it's it's just exactly. Money match. And now, you know what's funny about this? I was like, it led me down a rabbit hole. How do people feel about The Rock versus, you know, Hogan? Everybody said they didn't do anything. They said that it was like a whole lot of nothing. But it was the fact that they were just like two of the biggest stars on two of the biggest channels. Yeah. Yeah, that it is like just epic for them. Like everyone remembers it to be better than what it was. That is unfortunately sometimes how like the big names and the big name matches, that's how it falls and happens. It kind of, sometimes that sucks. That could also be like generational too. Like say for me, like I didn't grow up watching Hulk Hogan. So he's not like as big as... That's interesting. That's interesting. It's not because like you grow up watching right. The Rock being the biggest thing, and right. then, you know Hulk. You know he's big. Right. 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 You, you know didn't he's big. watch him. You're not as invested in. Him. I mean, unless you're watching like old tapes old and tapes stuff and... like that. That that's actually interesting because you know what you're basically saying is like uh, the context for you for wrestling is completely different. So you don't you don't even Hulk Hogan was larger than large back then. I'm talking like he was the largest thing. Like if you saw you you saw the yellow come in with him, you know the whole the whole America stuff. That was what the Rock was for you, for right. them back that, then. Right, mm-hmm. that's the next yeah. generation. And then uh, you know, like how fans uh, recognize John Cena. Exactly, like that. exactly. Just, that just may not have been what you grew up being like. Oh right. snap, that's true. Right, Very true. You know the funny thing. Getting back to uh, Hogan is that. Um, I've heard on a few wrestling podcasts and whatnot certain things. People talk a lot about Hogan, and um, okay. I do know that um, when they would be whoever his opponent would be or whoever he'd be fighting that uh-huh. night, the way that he set up the matches, like number one stipulation would always be he was not going to lose. There you he go. He wouldn't lose, and that's part. And, I, maybe that's what Stone Cold was talking about. That's what maybe he was talking about. Maybe, and when you do look back at like. You know Hogan's um wrestling style, like it's very different, obviously, than the style now, right? And days, but um, you know his finisher um was so crazy back then, but um, I mean now <laughs> when you look at it, it's, it's just this, you know, it's yeah, it's just a like a it's a basic ability. <laughs> but you know what? It's like finishers come and go like that. Like one of my favorite finisher, my fi- actually my favorite finisher of all time is DDT. The D- oh, okay, DDT, classic. It, there you it, go. Exactly. Jake yeah. Snake used to kill people yeah, with that. Yeah. If Jake hits yeah. you with it, you don't get up. You don't get up, and that's it. Now it's just like a flyaway move. Uh, I hit you with DDT real quick, and then I got a question. Everything for you. keeps going just as quick. I got a question for you that would tie for you too. Um, how do you guys feel? Starting with you, how do you feel about something that was considered like the ultimate move for someone to have to be relegated as just like a basic attack that they use every so often in a match? Well, like that that's just that move, the DDT. Right. That used to, like if you got hit with a DDT back in the day, that was a finisher. That you was were, a finisher. You were done. You didn't get back right. up. One, two, three. Right, right. You're out. Now it's just 
Whoop, DDT, 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 tornado DDT. And how do you how do you feel about it though? Do you feel like they like they made it bastardized, or do you feel like maybe the magic of that move is gone? I guess a little bit of that the uh, the latter, the, like a little bit of the magic of it's gone. Because like I said, it's one of my favorite moves, and it, if done right, the right look, the right angles, and all that could be a very devastating looking move. Okay. And a lot of people just do it devastatingly looking and. They could just and roll it just right roll back it. up out of it. The match keeps going. Right. And I just, does, it just uh, doesn't feel, does it hit for you the same way? Do you get angry? No, I mean, like uh, currently John Moxley, AEW does it pretty good with, uh, okay. what's he call it now? Paradigm shift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a a du- spin. Well, I'm, okay. it's a double underhook DDT. Okay. Like that. Like that's a lot of thing I like with commentary. I like if you call it the real the real move by its name. I know right. a lot of wrestlers, yeah. if it's their finisher, they'll put a special name to it. Okay. As opposed to what like they're trying to jazz act, it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pageantry of it, and I don't I don't take away of that. I just like hearing what the actual name of it is. Ah, okay. I prefer that kind of commentary. Okay, so you like, like the technical, uh, the real. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what it is. So yeah. is Mox? Does Mox have the best DDT right now? In your opinion, who has the best DDT right now out there in the game? Uh, well, like I said, his is pretty good. A double underhook DDT. That's a pretty good one. Mm-hmm. Um, what makes it different from like a normal DDT? Like, what does it, you know, have well, I mean, like, like any I, extra I, effect? I keep calling it a double underhook. He uh, grabs both of your arms up in it rather than just hooking one oh, arm oh, in your okay, neck and dropping you. Yeah, I got you. There, there's a different kinds of uh, styles of it, different ways you hook, or, uh, hook arms, hook the head. Right. Um, just like any other kind of move, there's different variations of it. Okay. Bobby Roode's got one that's pretty nice. The glorious DDT. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, that's how I am. You refresh me on things, it all starts, yeah, coming, it starts back. Yeah. coming back. I mean, the best person I think back in the that hands down had the best DDT was Raven. Back Raven? In the day. Okay. Yeah. The even flow. The even oh, flow. yeah. That's what. If they all, you put a spin to that name, too. Right. Yeah, no, I was going to ask. I mean, if you guys know, do you guys have any favorite finisher moves? Which one is, I mean, you did say DDT. DDT and a pile driver, baby. Pile Stump driver? puller pile driver. Okay, okay, so not not the tombstone. Uh, tombstone well, I mean, classic. That's too. just another variation of a pile driver. Right, okay. right, right, right. If but I, it means it means more knowing that it's a tombstone, even though it's a pile driver. If I had to say anything, the stump puller pile driver. Just grab a handful of that belt, uh-huh. boom, okay. drop Man. them. Nice. You you got one. You so, got it. actually, it's a it's a two parter, and it's the people's elbow and the rock bottom, and the only reason why I like it. It's like the silliest move ever, but he sets it up just so epically. It, you know, it, true. It's, it's the setup that you're in love with. You're not in love with the move itself, but you're in love with him breathing in the air, mm-hmm. taking in the entire crowd. You know, like he's basically like channeling energy like he's Goku the before best. he does the move. Remember yeah. when he was all dressed up, had the nice dress shirt, loafers on still. Exactly. And he, he, was, he came it, tss, yes, sliding exactly, across the ring, exactly. five, six feet and right. hit it. Right. And even that too. Like, you know, it's you know what is you know what's coming, but what is he gonna do? How obnoxious is he gonna be before he actually lands this thing? You know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, still to this day, actually, I think that um 'cause most most wrestlers and especially the uh more present day wrestlers, um every move, every finisher move is reused and everyone puts on their own little jazz and their own flavor to it. Right. But I don't think I've ever seen anyone really do the uh, the rock bottom now yet. No, they still. don't. But um, I was gonna say my two of my favorite finishers. I guess I, I still I, I love the RKO. I knew it. R- RKO. Yeah, okay, it's my favorite, bro. RKO is nice. And the stunner, which goes back because Stone Cold did it the best. But now um, Kevin Owens. Um, Kevin Owens does a pretty good stunner. one. Yeah, okay, he does, okay. does a good job. John Cena with his springboard stunner get out of here. Yeah, no, <laughs> so which one do you true. like more, RKO or stunner? I, oh, man, that's tough. I don't know. I don't know. I will say RKO out of nowhere is overused. But okay. sometimes when he does hit it out of nowhere, it's brilliant. It's yeah, brilliant. It's dope, <laughs> yeah, so, do, so you like like the... Uh, like it's almost like a chess move. Like he, it's a, It's a setup, of course, to get to the RKO. Yeah, and then it's like, like I said. Like I random. said, sometimes I think it's overused too much. Right. I do think it is because uh-huh. I think it's become like a fan favorite. It has to be done, and some things get used to death. Yes, That's true. This is true. Well, basically, everything The Rock did, <laughs> but people wanted it. You know, I, I feel like in the same way of the as the RKO, 
uh, since fans want it so much, they have to like fit it in, even if they don't want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, you guys got a favorite brand? Um, do you guys were you WCW, WWF, ECW? I mean, we can even go present day now and throw AEW in there or some of the smaller ones, like okay. TNA and whatnot. But do you guys have a... TNA is bigger now, brand? ain't they? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty big. We'll get into that, too, because okay. actually I think that um, I think that AEW is about to buy. Really? I don't, you think they're going to buy? I don't, I don't know. I think... I don't know if I would say buy, but may, I, I'm definitely interested to see where it goes with this working partnership. They're, yes, they're mm. definitely scheming something together. I li- it definitely got me to watch Impact. Okay. Yeah. So Impact I, has gotten a lot better. Let me throw a, a question better. for both of you then. Uh, if this buyout happens or is actually in the talks of, do you think it has like the the backing and the the momentum behind it to be a competitor, like an actual competitor with WWE? If it links up with AEW, when the AEW right now, I think it's the hottest thing. Okay. It's, Definitely, it's the hottest, but the numbers matter. in my matter. opinion. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I mean... I, numbers, I think AEW is fucking killing it. I haven't watched any WWE product since AEW has been aired. That's interesting. That's interesting you say that. I, well, I guess I kind of got stale with some WWE product. I don't know if it was storylines. I like a lot of the wrestlers, so it must have been storyline-wise. I think things just got stale. AEW was new. It was fresh. It had a lot of new up-and-cover wrestlers that I watch from, like, the internet because I'll watch individual wrestlers Mm -hmm. a lot of time more so than, like, a show. Okay. Like, like through the internet. I'll look up certain wrestlers, watch some of their matches through YouTube. Oh, okay. So there's a little bit of the, you know, internet social media age in there helping you watch more content. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, where I learn about a lot of the wrestlers that I follow now is through the internet. Okay. We're going to have to talk about that, too, if we can. Um, for For you, Josh... How does how do you feel about AEW coming in? Do you think that it would be able to grow to that size where they're actually pulling people away? Did you f- have that same allure? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. I, I, I agree, too. I think AEW has done a hell of a job. Um, from the beginning, even when there were talks about the startup and whatnot, it was something exciting. Something because magical. It was new. It. it was fresh. It was okay. something, the and promise it, of something different. We were tired of Vince McMahon. And it was his, different. His shenanigans. We, it was different. Their first pay-per-view show or whatnot that they put together all in all in all in okay it sold, you want to explain all in real quick it sold out in what was it i don't record remember. time it was minutes wasn't Re- it minutes yeah minutes and wow. it, it was um what ten thousand. i think the the place where they were at 10, sat 10 000, something like that jesus but that those tickets that shit went in a matter of minutes, sold out. The scalping must have been ridiculous. On no it. other, and and I, this I think was they before, did pretty good with that, didn't they? With scalpers, yeah, yeah. They this was before they were even on TV. Wow, I believe. Can so, you imagine the the type of movement behind you to not be on TV and still be live? That's how good and that's promising amazing. this brand was, yeah, and right and they've they've definitely followed through so far. It's something like I said, um, AEW is something great to talk about. Bird. That for me though, going back is um I'm definitely in the AEW right now. Back in the day though too, um I feel like it it's hard uh because I was just a wrestling fan in general. Exactly. So like, WCW yeah. was cool, WWF I was really into, but ECW holds a special place in my heart. Oh, well. ECW? Okay. ECW was nasty, bro. Yeah, that was the like the, hey, you want the Sabu, alternative baby. Sabu. Yo, Sabu is the best. Sabu. So. Rob, I went to Newburgh. Well, what? Uh, we'll save that for the live talk. Okay, word, yeah. The Sabu, That's- Rob Van Dam. Wow. All of them. All of Rhino. Them. Rhino was one of my favorites back in the day. ECW. He's, okay. Uh, just Incredible. Just Incredible? Awesome. Oh, Just Incredible. Sorry. Sad yeah, man. wow. I loved it. Wow. It just had more like a gritty feel to it, like like kind of like how I felt growing up. I always felt like I was right. a little a little more different. So that felt a little more different. So yeah, like, it was like raw. It was edgy. Yeah. They were trying to like, you know, yeah. push the boundaries. Yeah. yeah. Sandman. Wow. Do you guys have a uh, like a favorite era or a best time in wrestling that you think, you know, that you can sure. remember? With, with wrestling, I don't know if I really have a favorite era. There's like just different things that I take from each 
part that I really like, and I really hold on to the parts that I really like. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. like, is, does it expand a specific amount of time? Like, did you like all of the you know early aughts, like from O one or O O to like O five or something like that? Uh, I mean, well, I like I said when I started out watching, I watched like some ninety eight to maybe okay, you were O two O three, and mm-hmm. then I fell off for a couple years. I didn't get back into it until maybe actually. What got me back into it was another live event and seeing the live crowd. Live event was what got me because, okay. like, I fell off. I was like, ah, just, so it was it was in and out and, spor- and sporadic. So it wasn't. Uh, how, how did you feel when you came back? Then let me ask that question. How did you feel when you came back to it, uh, knowing that there was this expanse of time that it wasn't good for you? Well, because it was a live show that got me back into it, I was like, "Oh, this crowd is great. This show is great." Okay. The, the drive of the crowd really so you got like me the back into it. And everything. So I was excited because I was like, okay. "I got to learn all these new people. Hopefully, there's still some old faces that I recognize." Oh, that's so interesting. And there was so there's new faces I had to learn. A lot of the old people coming around still that I remembered. So it was. It, it made it a okay. made it a lot of fun again. How how did the energy for you feel like when you saw a familiar face come back? It was great because I would get the chance to see them wrestling somebody I didn't know. Ah, see, uh, that's interesting. So I'd get a new match that I never saw before. Right, right, right. And a whole new experience either way, but with one former character at least. Like I remember hearing at the live show, I was like, oh, this little kid next to me is cheering for this guy, CM Punk. What a funny ass wow, name. Wow, CM Punk. And then on. after like a couple shows, I was like, CM Punk is great. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Wow. And yeah. you got the respect from it too, even though you didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. What about you, Josh? You had like a stretch of time too right. that you fell off and mm-hmm. then came back. How mm-hmm. did you feel when you first came back and you were like, oh man, this is great again? Uh, I'm trying to remember. It probably, I know when I fell off, it was just, I feel like just a really slow period of time. And I, I felt like there weren't very many. Um, they didn't have a good selection. Good selection. So, like, okay. it wasn't fun to watch. They didn't have very many good storylines because the people that they had weren't very good. Ah, I see. So, when I got back into it, was actually, I believe, I, I want to say, um, was the same with Cody when one of the first uh, live shows that... Uh, I think I, I started to, getting you back into it because of that, didn't I? I think so. It okay. could be. It could be because of... Yeah, cool. Because I was like, yo, local shows. Remember this guy? Remember that guy? Yeah. And then yo, we got into it. And that's 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 awesome. Like the friendship, like, you know, watch this. And guy. See, watch like this I was guy. telling this guy you. sucks. Yeah. Civic Center. Civic Center, okay. I think you went to a different show in Newburgh. Yeah. We local wrestling around well, before COVID, this pandemic, local mm-hmm. wrestling around here was big. Okay. There was an NXT show announced that they had to NXT. cancel due to COVID. Yeah. That they was were due to show end of March, beginning April, something like that, I think. We'll say shout out to NXT. That is one another shout great out. brand. WWE, yeah, one that has hasn't been ruined. Right. WWE's yeah. shining star yeah. <laughs> right now, exactly. Hold on. Which yeah. also another war. I haven't been able to turn off AEW on Wednesday nights to tune to a, uh, NXT just to channel up. Make sure you tune in if you watch wrestling. AEW TNT. Okay. Mm-hmm. So getting back to it though, um, did you have a favorite era or a? Uh, oh a, my bad. Yeah, we no, didn't no, even finish that. Um. Yeah. So as far as favorite era, kind of like it kind of blends in together, but right, we'll right. start from, you know, when Eric Bischoff started falling off in WCW. So like around like the late nineties. I hate that guy. I, exactly, everyone hates him. But that that's another great thing about wrestling that yeah. there's always people to hate you. Yeah, and you hate and them. You love to hate them. You love to hate. Exactly. That's why The Rock could win no matter what. The bad guy, you still hate, you still love him. And then the best hate him. when that turn comes, and then you're like, what the. fuck? I love this guy. He's great. Exactly. exactly. What the hell? Perfect yeah. heel. What are you doing? Yeah. Perfect heel. Perfect, perfect heel. heel. But back back to the question. It's starting from Eric Bischoff uh, falling off and, you know, pussyfooting around and stuff. Um, when he, Best thing he probably did is bring out uh, Goldberg for me. That's um, a boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but him, it starts to blend in with, like, NWO and everything. Uh-huh. Um, and then from NWO, like, you know, that, that's like the period where you start changing the channel to WWF to see what's going on over there. And you start seeing DX, you know, you start seeing the nation, you start seeing the rock, you know, you start seeing Kane, uh, and undertaker and stuff uh-huh. and Mick Foley and other people talk and about an old face showing up sting. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that entire era as it blends into there. And then when WCW actually kind of like folds into WWF. 
and then ending it off with like Stone Cold coming in and you know like stuff between Stone Cold and The Rock and between McMahon and stuff. So I guess maybe up to like what like oh two oh three. Yeah, to that I think I think uh, that was probably like the end of the transition the, the, somewhere exactly. in there. 2000, 2000. 2001 was right. like really the end of WCW as a standalone. Right, right, right. And that's when they just get folded in after that. But around there, because it it was just magical. It was like you know there were so many personalities from both shows. Exactly on the so many great wrestlers in one spot. But then the, right. then the problem of so many, so many not getting TV time, so exactly. many not knowing to do in the storyline. Right. Even currently, I know WWE buys a lot of people up just to have them. Right, just like they're like just to have pieces. them with them. Right, we may right. not have something for you now, but wasted talent. Exactly. Man, what a shame. That ex- yes, but that's also hence the reason why I'm sure you both like NXT because it's like completely different from what they did back then. It's all fresh faces. Yeah, that, and those people shine down there for real. They got mm-hmm. skill. Their every match is phenomenal. And they do one person, one current person, actually, who I feel like was amazing in NXT, and he was called up to the main roster, and he hasn't just done anything. They're not oh, using no. him. Is uh, Alistair Black? Oh, oh, what a shame! Almost forgot about him because they ain't never use him. But um, uh, I think for me, uh, I think the best time in wrestling that I can remember was between the 97 and 01 time. 97 and 01? That okay. was the Attitude Era. I think that was the best era for Actually, me. I could have just said Attitude Era. Yeah, for yes. me, yeah. Uh, I think That's it was beautiful. the best. It was the most entertaining. It was like I so edgy, it. cutting edge at the time. Yes. It was, was it really fun. cutting edge, though? Well, I mean... I mean, it it, it, it definitely fit the period. W- the, I was sure. going to say, maybe because it was just my age and the time frame. Right. They right. were like, oh, yeah. Yeah. This as, is attitude. As, attitude. as they called them puppies, you know? Right. right. They got Things a, like they that. They got away with a lot more <laughs> back oh, the then. the blood and the guts. <laughs> that they can <laughs> the get away with The thumbtacks and the chest. Yeah, yeah. I'm pouring every, and like briefcases and stuff like that. The hardcore championship. <laughs> Yeah, they need to bring that belt back. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Josh, well, tell us a little bit more about uh, why you like the Attitude Era. Uh, man, for me, I, like I said, I thought it was every, everything about it was raw. Like the, that was the best time. I feel like they had the best matches. They had the um, remember the twenty four seven title back then. The hardcore, the hardcore championship. I think that yeah, was, yeah right? when it was twenty four seven. Yeah, and now yep, they have was... the 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 rehash twenty four seven. Get out of here! Yeah, that was kind of trash. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. was it was so much funny. You guys gonna have to catch me. I, maybe I'm glad that I haven't watched wrestling in quite some time. No, don't but don't that be glad was you when... haven't watched wrestling. Okay, no. so now I need to watch wrestling because the attitude era back then it was everything was so good. Like everybody involved, man. It was just a different time. Like there was. To this day, even there's not. Um, I feel like it's different today's wrestling. And That's what's good though, is that things. it's changing. Okay. Yes, but um, going back, I feel like there's nothing, nothing like the Attitude Era for me, okay. at least. Um, You've always got to have some constants and some change. Yes. Yeah. I okay, agree. I agree that, with that. Yeah. Yep. Um, real quick, focusing, uh, I guess, on getting back to certain matches and stuff. Um. Do you guys have or recall maybe your most influential match that you ever saw? Like something that when you saw it was like, whoa, okay, this is different, you know? Oh. Something definitely memorable. Interesting. I mean, while you guys think, I can just go real quick yeah, and say. Go um, now, are, we, are we dipping into uh, televised only? Can we go with live only? Or I mean, not live only, but can live be included in it? Um, Just because I know I feel like there's going to be two separate talking points, live and uh, televised. Yeah, let's st- let's try to stick with televised right now. Okay. Um, I was just going to mention for me, um, it was a match that happened back in uh, 1999. Okay. Uh, I was at a pay per view called No Mercy. No, oh, No Mercy. And it was the first ever um, tag team ladder match. And it was between the nice. Hardy Boys versus Edge and Christian. Lots of great matches with them. That yeah, that ladder match in, was ladder included. phenomenal. Versus, oh, you that said the, the Hardy Boys, one. right? Hardy Boys uh, versus yep, versus Edge and Christian, and it was the first uh, the first time they ever did a tag team ladder match. That's it. You know what? I'd be forgetting about Edge and Christian. They they are up there as far as like as athleticism mm-hmm. and whatnot. Yeah, the Brood. Yeah, Gangrel. The Gangrel. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. get Gangrel out of here. Yeah. <laughs> 
come on. <laughs> Speaking of DDTs, he had a nice DDT. Gangrel for okay. sure. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He put his whole body into them things. But boy. yeah, no, that <laughs> it was uh, all body. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's what went into it. <laughs> but yeah, for me, that match, um, that match was insane. Some of the moves, some of the things that they did, how they used the ladder, some of those hits, innovators, uh, absolutely crazy. You you know what? Um, I'm actually so embarrassed because uh, you know what? As far as like like I was saying, athleticism, that was amazing. Mm-hmm. That is probably one of the best. But the one that is favorite to me is because it's a completely different reason. And that's uh, DX versus The Rock. Mm. Yeah. But I guess, you know, I, I feel bad because you guys are like all, I can tell that you were both all about the athleticism too. Like, you know, and I was more about like the spectacle of it all. I'm into all of it. You're into all of it? That's okay, that's beautiful. So Thank you. The whole, the entire yeah. entity of it all. Right, right. Because I was like, damn, like when, once you said, once you said versus like the brood and everything. Like I, I like, like oh I God. like my technical moves being called, but I'm also into the pageantry into of the, it all oh, too. Thank God. Okay, okay. Because I was way into the pageantry, like the rock in and of himself. I like all the made flash and the bang exactly. and everything. Oh, I love all the pyrotechnics. Oh, okay, everything. okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, the rock versus DX, and it was just all because of the spectacle. Yep. It wasn't really for the moves or anything. Yep, no, I like all that. The storyline, the build up, the little vignettes, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so how do you fan. How, how do you exa- how do you feel about the you know when WWF uh, back at the time, anyways, when they were do like all of the back scene stuff, like when they would have like an announcer come in so they can just sit down and talk shit. You know, and stand with. They have all the backstage stuff going on. Yeah, I like it. it I like that it because uh, I know a lot of it can be very heavily scripted with some companies, right. but I like that if it's uh, given to the wrestler is like free reign for you know creative development. Mm-hmm. Have your own develop your own character, develop this storyline how you feel your character would do it. Right, right. I can dig it. I like it. Okay, but uh, I know a lot of things. I know you got to follow some sort of guideline to a script, but if it's right. Heavily scripted, you can kind of you tell. Can, oh, you definitely can. And tell. then it's like, uh, it just kind of makes it. But then again, you got to know what wrestling is in and of itself, so you're kind of buying into that at the start of it. But okay, I like all the backstage stuff. Um, getting off social media is pretty nice because I don't see a lot of super. Oh, like the super super into it's, it. So yeah. like, it's like, hey, Fabe's alive again for me. I don't see a lot of the social media stuff i see backstage stuff that they show me so it's kind of like it was when i was younger that's which is what makes it a little more fun for me so you're saying def- you wanted to, you were just saying basically and definitely that a lot of social media kind of takes away from the magic you get a lot of spoilers through that way i okay. mean like reddit is the only thing i kind of look at there's a great uh great group on there squared circle they got a lot of good information in there mm-hmm. but uh, a lot of it's like old matches stuff like that but not following Every individual wrestler's Instagram or Facebook. I'm not, right, I'm see, not getting every all, movement. It's like I only know it when I watch it. And then I'm like, wow, oh man, look at that. That's you amazing. Know? You can even have that feeling every it's single like, time. It's like back in the day, it makes you want to tune in. Like I, I got I got an alarm set every Wednesday. I'm like, oh, hey, no, it's <laughs> dynamite on. <laughs> you feel like you're like a little kid going back yep. to that. Yeah, yep. that's how I felt when I was like 10. I don't, or I don't know what's going to happen that night until I watch it. Just. <laughs> That's why it's like I'm. I'm like, oh, oh, the dogs. I gotta go. Commercial break, please. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, best group faction. Which one? Who is it? Ah, uh, let me take my time thinking. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say I can think of so many, but I know you're probably gonna be on my team with this. The wife is gonna hate me for it. I'm sorry, babe, but probably undisputed era. They're pretty solid. Okay. Mm. Undisputed. They are a solid team. Oh, Adam God. Cole, baby. Oh, what? as for me, new uh NWO. Eh, yeah, yeah. NWO. So I know exactly. <laughs> See, they got, you look kind of a disappointment over there. They got, they got the, too big at the end though. They got too big. When they started doing the Wolfpack Let, stuff. They, they was, let everybody in. Yeah. It yeah. was like Who's at the door? But Come that, on in. That was NWO. Kind of, that was kind of the story, though. They were like, "Oh, we're just gonna turn this into NWO." Show. Yeah, but then it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that, that, that. Just personal feelings. No, yeah, yeah. But you, they had Goldberg. Goldberg was like, you know, fight rage against the machine type. Like I'm afraid of the inner circle starting to get too big. Right. You know, everybody's allowed in. Yeah. No, for me, my favorite 
I, I'm going to go with uh, DX for sure. Okay, classic, DX. Classic. Very classic. What, what, there were many evolutions of DX, though. D- what was your favorite DX lineup? My favorite DX uh, lineup was when it was Triple H, okay. um, X-Pac, X-Pac, China, and uh, Road Dogg, Rest in peace, and China. Billy Gunn. Road that, Dog, Billy Gunn, New Age Outlaws. Yes, yeah. them, them, that group together was so influential. That was a lot of memorable times too. Absolutely. Watching that, which gets me back to one of the reasons why uh, I think X Pac is one of the one of the dopest wrestlers or was ever was because he is legitimately um, one of the, like the only, if not, I, I think he's the only member that has been officially a part of both DX. And the NWO, very true, very which true. Which is dope. Two, uh, two of the one of the most highest factions, you know, in Ever. wrestling history, and he was a part of both. How did you feel when is, he slipped out of the NWO then and just went straight over? Um, I actually liked. I, that's when I liked him better. I was a okay. fan of him back you, you, in WCW. You were better when he just dipped because he just bounced. I remember. Well, he got Monday. fired. He, or he got fired. But he still. got fired. So, and yeah. I remember the Monday Night Raw when he. I was watching it, and I remember when Triple H um, was talking about DX and hyping the whole group up, and then all of a sudden they brought out X Pac, and yep. it, that shit was sick. Wow, it was awesome, and I I still remember that to this day. Like his whole speech, everything, his whole vibe, and then it was a wrap from there. Hmm. Like DX was one of my favorites, and that's what like fully was... brought you away from w- WCW. Not not fully because I did. Um, I still went back and forth, but I definitely, okay. like I said, during the Attitude Era was around that time too. The back and forth thing, and I was full like Attitude Era. Like that was that was some good stuff. Yes, sir, it was. But um. Let's take a quick break, but um, before we go, let's just uh, remind our listeners to please subscribe or follow us on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Anchor. Um, please continue to rate us with a five star. Please bless it. Please, yes. Keep supporting us and the pod. Um, we really appreciate that. And we'll be right back. All right. So I have a question for our listeners out there. Do you own a computer? Are you having trouble with broken screens, data backup issues, password reset problems, virus spyware removal, software installation issues? If so, Slipstream Repair Computer Electronic Solutions has you covered. Contact Timothy Latunde at 845-204-1712. The email is ss.sho16 at gmail.com. Once again, that is 845-204-1712. And the email is ss.sho16 at gmail.com. Call or email to schedule a free consultation. Still joining us is Cody. Yep. Now, in the beginning, we focused a lot uh, on the past. You know, we uh, got struck a little with some nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, uh, we want to switch up the flow a little bit. I want to touch on some live shows, live wrestling, stuff that has to do with that. So, Cody. Yeah. How many live shows have you been to? Oh, off the top of my head, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, it's got to be at least 10, I would say, maybe a dozen. Nice. Ranging from WWE, TNA, Big Time Wrestling, Northeast Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Nice. Now, explain explain to us a live show. Like, Explain the energy, explain the experience. What makes, what makes live shows? Oh, it's it's great, dude! Just the just the energy you like, you pull it in from everybody else around you. You get excited when everybody else does. You you hear all the cheers, all the jeers, 
You hear all the little things the guy next to you is saying, making you crack up that you wouldn't hear on TV. You know, you hear some of that dirty stuff that you're not supposed to hear that's funny and makes you crack up. <laughs> you hear all the stomping, you feel all the vibration. That's the best part. Yeah. Okay. Have you, Tim, ever been to any live shows? Uh, yeah. A couple. I've been to, uh, they were all WCW. Mm-hmm. And there was one back in like 90 for me. Probably wasn't WCW then, but it was... Were they house shows? Yeah, they did the house... It was uh, televised, actually. Uh, One of the first ones. And that was like back in 1990. And then I went to a more recent... Slightly more recent uh, one that had came to Atlanta at the time in 1999. Yeah. They were a lot longer. They were a lot longer. Well, I mean... The house shows I've been to were pretty decently long, but I heard the televised are a lot longer. Televised is long because they have to do like in between everything. They have to do like all of the setups and everything. And they do a lot of the dark matches first. Right, right. right. Yeah. So, I mean, that one mat or one, uh, the one that I went to, I think maybe we got there. It took like 30 minutes to get in and it was like maybe five hours almost for this one. Yeah. Like that's good. Four or five hours. Yeah. Yes, yeah, between like the setups and everything. Nice. So, yeah. So those are the only two, unfortunately. That seems like I have to go to some more. You guys are making it sound like it's amazing. Dude, if I can sell a live event, let me tell you, the place was erupting over the dude sweeping out the ring. Oh. In between matches, the crowd was going crazy. Man, that's just the hype for the next match, ain't it? If there's a little debris from some foreign objects, you know, something happening, <laughs> you got a guy comes out, sweep little wood bits out of there, some kendo stick, what have you, maybe wow. fall in the ring. Actually. Sweep it out for the safety of the next performers, the next wrestlers coming in. And you can get a crowd pop over the guy sweeping out the ring. <laughs> so imagine shout him sweeping out, the stuff under it. Yeah, shout out uh, the Redemption Show, right? I believe was that, that was Redemption. Uh, yeah, that was a okay. lot. No, that I was Prison Break. Was it Prison yeah, Break? Yeah, because that was where uh, we had uh, JT Dunn. Called him out, talking some smack, threw the elbow on him. JT Dunn, local boy, look him up. Yeah, shout out okay. JT Dunn. He's got skill. Um, I'm trying to think, though. Cause... That was Prison Break, because that was where he fought uh, Matt Taven. Oh. oh, I think you're right, actually. Yep. Yep. You're right. Yeah, Prison Break. Because yep. uh, Pentagon, yep, Pentagon and uh, Moxley. Moxley had the match. They came up through the seats. Yep. And uh, Pentagon used the, uh, used the broom against him. <laughs> One of my favorite wrestlers to see live, or that I've seen live. I got a few. Pentagon, okay. Pentagon Junior. Pentagon Junior. What makes it What makes it good for you? Like when you see him, like what's the that electric spark that you get every time you see him? His look, his move style. Okay. He's slick, bro. Okay. Because I know nothing about him. No, he he's well, he's a luchador. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's a luchador. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. The acrobats. Yep. Okay. And uh, dude's just got crazy energy. Okay. And uh, just some of the moves he's got, like Josh was saying, his move set is great. Okay, what, he, what's his move set? Oh well, like I said, he's a loot store. He's got a lot of uh, high flying yeah. moves. Yeah, yeah. With just some very high impact moves that are just crazy. Really high impact and the acrobats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, he was actually um one of the best live shows that I've ever seen. One of the best matches. I was gonna um, say we've seen him twice. Okay. Yeah, we have. Uh, we have seen him twice. Did he win both his matches? N- yeah, no. he beat yeah, the first match. He, he beat Darby <laughs> Allen, which was my favorite. Uh, one of my favorite live matches was Pentagon Junior versus Darby Allen. Okay, great match, great match, insane. Did or he, then, um, but I don't think he beat Mox. No, he he didn't beat Mox. So yeah, so um, what was the, for one? What was the highlight of that match, if you remember? With Moxley and Pentagon, I'll just say it was a dirty movie. Pulled Pentagon's mask off. Yeah, you, you pulled the mask off. Is that something they shouldn't be coming off? You, you don't, don't do pull that to Luchador's, Luchador's mask Yeah, that's mask true. Off. That's true. Out of respect, I know. Yeah. But so, do, was that a real thing, or did they write that in for you to hate something like that? Who knows? It could have been an on-the-fly thing on the word between the wrestlers. Could have been an on-the-fly thing. A little extra generated heat. Mox had, uh, he was running with the NEW title at the time, right? Oh, yeah, Yeah. definitely doing something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're hot. Yeah. But, um, no, yeah, Pentagon is a... He he's an awesome awesome guy to watch to look up. He's right now currently on uh, on AEW. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. So, do you have you got a favorite match that you've seen live? Oh, if I had a favorite match live, it would probably have to be 
that JT Dunn and Matt Taven. That was a great match. JT yeah, Dunn, I awesome. think, really shined in that match. Okay. Uh, Anything that was like uh, that popped out at you that was like the the highlight of that match? Uh, well, it was the first time that I can recall seeing JT Dunn in the ring, and he just really shined. Great performer, great in the ring, great on the mic. Mm. And I just love seeing new talent, seeing what, especially local boys, see what they got to do. Okay. And it's, it feels good because you know he's local. It's like a special shout out, yeah. like he's keeping it real for you. Yeah, yeah, it's it's real nice knowing you got a local wrestler like being from Poughkeepsie. If you got Hale Collins, okay, shout, shout out to Hale Collins, local Poughkeepsie boy. But it, right. you know, you always it, it's like you always just got that like hometown local boy right, right. behind him, right? Like this thing. is our boy. Yeah, now go make us proud. Yep. Yeah, I've seen three live shows, I believe, and um. The three live shows that I saw from Northeast uh, all had JT done in them. And the first time I ever saw him, um, I was a big fan. Although he was in, you remember the, um, what was it, the six-man oh, yeah, ladder yeah, yeah, match? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That, yeah, and he With, was uh, awesome Wrecking Ball that. was in that. Man Scout was also in that, right? Yeah. And uh, Redemption. Yeah. That's that right. That was an that's awesome, right. yeah, that was an awesome match. But yeah, he's always got skilled that... Um, the match that he fought Matt Taven and actually that was um, a surprise because he was supposed to fight Ray Phoenix, but Phoenix had uh, travel difficulties. Yeah, and that's the match I was looking forward to. So I was pretty disappointed, man, when Ray Phoenix didn't show up because I thought Ray Phoenix versus JT Dunn would have been sick. But see, that's oh, that's when when you buy your ticket and you look at the bottom and it says card subject to change. Sometimes it works in your favor. Oh. You get a nice surprise match like that. So if how does how do they plan something like that, like something that's like an added bonus? Sometimes somebody could be in town. The uh, price could just, be right. You, I mean, we so got an opening to work. This guy, would you be interested? Oh hell yeah! I've so they call it right before. in, like like minutes before, like hours before. Uh, it could be. I mean, I'm not exactly sure how predate his travel issues were. How mm -hmm. you know how much time crunch they were under, but. Like I said, if somebody's in town, people, wrestlers got the right connection. Oh, I know this guy. He's got the night off. Maybe give him a call. Okay. Sometimes that's what's nice about wrestling. You got people all over the country that are in it, people all over the country that are wrestlers. So That's beautiful. I mean, it, it's as a person that has a family that likes other sports like baseball and uh, basketball and football, none of them really took uh, wrestling seriously. Like I know, I know they call it wrestling entertainment. Entertainment now, but a lot of them didn't take it serious. Oh, why are you watching this? Why are you watching wrestling? It's it's all fake. But it uh, so it, so is Game of Thrones. So, so is Thrones. so yeah. is any of the other TV shows. You're right; they're all scripted. I mean, right. this it, if if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Right, right. And I always felt like there was athleticism there. They, I mean, they are actually Definitely. doing moves that take a lot of energy. It takes a lot of working out, and you know conditioning I, yourself to do this thing i can't do it yeah exactly <laughs> absolutely you have to have skill you have to be um in shape you know what i'm saying it is all uh, a form of athletics it's mm -hmm. a form of art the only thing fake really about it is you know certain storylines and whatnot are scripted right but the actual moves the things that these um wrestlers go through shit if you think it's fake let one of them you know smack you around a little bit or right. let you, you know. You got to know how to deliver and receive. And receive, exactly. You've exactly. seen how many people can get injured, broken necks. and They're not aiming to do that to each other. Oh. Uh -huh. So they, oh, of course, obviously, they always like uh, play they're always, around each They're other. always looking out. For, right. They know the moves that they're going. They discuss everything that's going to be done so that everything is done. So, you know, if, it's done safely as possible. Exactly. Like look at a pile driver. You're dropping them right on their head. You can yeah, you know, right. break someone's break neck. someone's neck. Yeah, actually shatter the neck entirely. It's mm -hmm. something that somebody knows is going to happen to them. They brace for it. The person doing it does something to protect the person mm -hmm. coming out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's understood. But mm -hmm. do we do we have a time for another like a quick question off of this one? Yeah, absolutely. okay. So uh, what I would want to ask is, uh, do they have like an idea or a place you can go to learn about that culture of quickly telling each other? You know, we got to do this move. You know, like how do they how do they slip it in and make it look so seamless? And do they have like a place where they like talk about this? Because this is like one of those most unspoken things about wrestling. Like, how do they script the moves like during the entire match? 
Well, I mean, some people will go through a rundown before the match, and they'll, they'll like take like five, ten minutes with the other guys are in the match with, and they'll have a little break time. I'm going to do this. I need to do this. Off the ropes. I'm going to do this. You're going to do this. Oh, okay, so they play it all up at the beginning, even before anything. They just some, remember it. Yeah. Okay. And some people will call it on the fly. Like I know Jericho will call things on the fly, but he's a veteran in the game. He's been doing it for thirty for years. For thirty now. years, right? Uh, I heard John Cena does that a lot. We'll call things on the fly. Okay, but John it's like, Cena if does. If you're good enough, and you you can mm-hmm. you know you can do that. Okay. See, and that's what takes skill: being able to call an entire match in the, in ring, the ring on the fly wow. as it's going. Right. You know what I'm saying? Only certain wrestlers, you know, are able to do that. And that's kind of what's lacking with current wrestling because they could feed off the crowd, tell the emotion is going high for you. Do this. Do move. this. Hit, move. hit me with this move. I'll take it, and it, you're gonna fucking pop. Right. But without the crowd, you know, it's kind of tough, but I, they're still doing a great job of what they're doing. Is the crowd still there? Is the presence still there for WWE? I know. I th- I'm assuming we're talking about WWE. Uh, well, I mean, like like I said, I haven't watched a lot of WWE product in months, mm-hmm. but Every- I, I've seen individual matches, tidbits here and there. They've got like a a screen set up. Okay. And uh, AEW has spaced out groups of like... Of matches and such. What would you say you've seen them? Of people. Like, AEW actually has people and fans that are spread out throughout the arenas where they've been doing it. Okay. And like Cody had mentioned, WWE right now, like, each seat is basically like a TV screen or a computer monitor. Like a Zoom meeting for wrestling. Right. Yeah, and it shows you imagine? tons of different people everywhere that are all linked into it. And so they're watching it live. They get their, you know. But yeah, the it's live. Not this, that's, a, that's an interesting way of doing it's it. It's different, but it's not, you know. I mean, it's better than being silent. Right. Having, uh, you know, being in a completely empty arena and everything silent because the crowd is um, extremely important. Yeah. Do you think that presence is still there, even though it's a lot different? Credit for trying. Credit for trying? Yeah. But, like, even with AEW when all this, when COVID was still, like, young to us months back, uh, they would have some wrestlers. You know, they were real strict with their testing, so they had wrestlers that would be, I guess, clean right. on the side of the ring. So at least you would have something. Some people cheering for wrestlers that they were, you know, aligned yeah, with backstage yeah. kind of shit. Or, right, right. But uh, the WWE tried it, and then I think they had some bra- outbreaks of COVID, so then they went to the strictly LED screen. That's a shame. That's okay, though. It, I mean, it is what it is. They're doing what they can. Right. They're keeping it going, so keep the wrestling going. That's it. But getting back, learning on how to have the skill and learning how to take the proper falls and bumps and learn how to call certain things in the ring, there are, you learn that in certain wrestling schools. Like okay. before, you, you go through a whole process and there's training centers and different things. A lot of wrestlers, what they do when they're starting out or amateur wrestlers and whatnot coming up, they do. They're the ones that are that take part in all the local shows. Okay, so they're doing like the you know right, and okay. they learn you know through all that, and then once they get enough shine, you know, doing what they do, one of the higher brands, you know, WWE or right. AEW, so, somebody might come calling, and they'll come and have a tryout or whatnot. And okay, they'll learn you know and they learn certain things, and obviously like throughout the years, <clears throat> and whatnot, um, just like anything you pick up more and more you know being around it right i guess the question i should ask is does it take like a certain amount of time before they finally get that call or is it just because they're just like really fun to watch and they call them up more more sooner to join something like aew or wcw the joy of aew dark yeah that is um well i don't know i think it's a little different i think i think so in some cases they do call people up um too early and that's why NXT is for the WWE. Right, it's like, right. It was considered like referring to basketball, like you know, like the D League. Yeah, the you D know League, right? But um, in terms of wrestling, it's really not because NXT is what's shining, and these these people are crazy. But um, I mean, it could take months. You know, months. People, they they could keep okay. people forever down the NXT lineup. You know, before they bring them to the main but, lineup. That that's the nice thing that AEW has been doing. They'll sign uh, appearance deals. I think they're called. We'll give you three appearances. You know, like okay. three appearance. So they give them like maybe, three chances. Maybe like one. Uh, I believe it's like maybe one on Dynamite, <laughs> two on their YouTube show. They do an hour long on Tuesday nights. Okay. 
give you a spotlight, just shine, see how you do. Right, Crown right, right. Taste to you, maybe we'll throw you a couple more. So maybe it's, that's almost that, like we'll throwing like bones. Contract. That's what's nice with AEW. They're giving these low people, indie people. If the crowd likes them, somebody's got like a hot buzz online or whatever. Let's check this guy out. Watch a couple of his matches. Huh. See what happens. Because like uh, that's how Darby Allen with AEW was spotted. Cody Rhodes saw his match at Redemption against Pentagon. Yep, at the that was one of and my that's, favorite live. That's what AEW took interest in Darby Allen. Okay. They'll give little guys shots. If if you're doing good, the crowd is really digging you. We'll put you up here, see what you can do. Do you think that the uh, the information age has assisted in finding these up and coming stars? Absolutely. Because definitely, yeah. people are sharing stuff like crazy. That's where a lot of it's coming from. Yeah. Internet buzz. Yep. The internet's going crazy over this guy. All right, so let's let's actually give him a legitimate shot. Yeah, yeah that's how it works. It's actually very beneficial for okay. them. Uh, the whole internet thing. That's why I like just watching the TV stuff because then I'm just getting a new person. I don't know nothing about him. Right. Check him out. What's he got? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, another one of my favorite matches that I ever saw live actually was um a Monday Night Raw. It wasn't a televised one, but it was um at the Civic Center and I was in high school. I got tickets for Christmas. Okay. okay. And... The main event was Randy Orton versus Triple H. Randy oh, Orton. Okay. And it was dope because that the whole night was phenomenal. It was awesome. I saw so many cool people. But that match was so cool because uh, Randy Orton ended up winning, caught Triple H with the RKO. Yep. There you go. As but he does. That show is crazy because that's the show where Randy Orton peeped or spotted his, his yeah. wife his future really his kim, wife kim what? warren yeah and that's there's a interview where i had seen where she had talked about the first time that she had seen randy and uh it was at the show in poughkeepsie and that was the one and she was talking shout outs to poughkeepsie <laughs> gave this man a wife yeah crazy so i got that was, two matches to bring up to you when you finish this yeah no no, no absolutely you can go bro I, I was done two matches that i know are highlights for you that we both got to see live oh okay 205 live tour. Yes. It was uh, yeah. Enzo Amore's final title match. Yeah. Who was it he fought in that match? I know Nia Jax was the ref. Cedric Alexander. That's it. Cedric Alexander, his last match with WWE. And then after that, we got to see his first match back into wrestling in the same venue. Yes, that was That's a highlight. Pillman that, Jr. Yeah, that was actually, I had that written down too to bring up. That was awesome. Because the whole story with Enzo, he, he was such an amazing, like, uh, crazy individual and like it was so cool because yeah we were both at a wwe show at the civic center and he had the belt right and he had a match which was an awesome match it was the main event he ended up winning okay so he retained his belt and then that evening some story broke out where um some chick accused him of this was in the me too movement right P yeah. or at least back in those times the I, start of it yeah something like that where did, the, did that movement actually you know affect him yeah he the uh, wwe fired him that oh, night wow. he stripped because him of the, that was his final match that with was the company his, so we you saw kidding. his fine yeah and he still had the belt and because this female you know accused him it wasn't the accusal it was um she accused him things turned out to be false. It was that he never let the company know that there was an ongoing investigation about him. Oh, and then that's unfortunate. Then. It was like, you he know, could have so cleared it, that up, but like he didn't let on to anything. They found out about it, got dirty about it and got rid of him, oh, no. which sucked because he was still the champ, which was awesome because we saw that match. He mm -hmm. won. He was the champ. And then that night it broke and then it took all they the released him. He never so lost it. He never lost it. Wow. Cruiserweight champion, so he, Enzo Amore. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> Real one. Yeah, for sure. So he stayed out um, of wrestling then in WWE for a long time. We hadn't wow. seen him. You Wanted know, he, nothing to do with it. Yeah, he didn't uh, do any of that stuff. Started rapping. Yeah, dabbled I guess in, it comes out in the rap. We dabbled, have to listen in, to it. <laughs> dabbled in some of the music. Okay. Uh, but then we went to a, uh, a house show, a Northeast wrestling show. Yeah, it was Redemption. Yeah, and it was his first in-ring match since he had gotten released by WWE. And we wow. saw, we were at that match as well. He only wanted to do it in that venue against Brian Pillman Jr. It, was there a specific reason behind it? Like I said, he never lost the title. Okay. So he wanted, if he was going to come back, he wanted it to be in that same building. 
that he never lost in. Ah, to keep it going for that, him? That was one major thing to him. He still considered himself the champion because he never lost the title officially. You know, they stripped it of him. So it, since since they stripped it from him, when he came back, did he still have that level of skill to keep up like when he did? Because, you know, like one year passes. It was totally you know different. What I mean? He it's came totally back different. a totally, it was like he came totally back like a totally different look. person, different look. Better? Different style. Yeah. I, I, li- I liked the match. I liked his style. I think he d- had a good match. What was crazy about it is, remember, he came out to no music. No, He used to be like, <laughs> really? He used to have blonde hair, re- very over-the-top personality. And then he just came back. Crazy had, had, on the mic. Had one of the best intros ever in, in wrestling. Right. And now, like when we saw him, he literally came out silent. <laughs> we, he won his match, right? <laughs> Got out the ring. And yep. left came out no n- music no that's, music no high fives on the no, side that, that's like the, the early yeah. hung out sulked in the corner and basically just had to got, tied him up the whole time not any crazy like moves like he used to do a totally different move like move set is that the is, was that his move set from that point on or was that just the move set for that match he never really he did much after, after that. that again I don't think he oh did. wow so like we were fortunate enough to see those crazy times of his last match. So the rise and fall. And then the first and last, maybe, you know, Northeast, which is dope, though. I don't know. That sounds kind of unfortunate. It seems kind of sobering that that it ends like that, though. Northeast Wrestling out of Newburgh. Best promotion. All right. We have to check it out. Yeah. That was, uh, I saw a show in Newburgh, Northeast. It was actually uh, Cody Rhodes versus Adam Cole. Okay. Which, and that match. That's one show I didn't get to that I wish I did. That local boy Hale Collins, he jumped off the top of a cage. I think I, I saw match. that though. Yeah, he didn't do like dope. a swanton bomb or anything. Did no, he? It, was he a, just it was an elbow. Off of... No elbow drop. Oh, from elbow the drop. Top. Yeah. Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah. It was Remember he crazy. did that off the table at Darby. Yeah. Or did it off the ladder through the table. Yeah, we've wow. seen him that jump was prison off break the when the title was on the line. Table. Yep. How do you guys feel about these type of matches where like uh, like tables and you know kendo sticks and and weapons that shouldn't be in a ring. Depends on used. the match, depends on the people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's it's called for, sometimes it's not. Like I said, if it, if it's not your guy, get get that out of the ring. Ref, okay. pay attention. What exactly. are you doing? What about you, Jay? Do you think that it's uh something that should be there or do you think it adds to a little bit of flavor to wrestling? It definitely adds, but it does depend on the match. Like if you were to have every single match like that, um, I, it would be a little much. You, know? you want, sometimes you want just okay. some fists. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you want just a normal match and other times, you know, it's all about the storyline. Okay. If it, if it builds up perfectly to something where it feels like, you just you need know, to beat the hell out of each other yeah, in the street. These, these dudes need to go at it with chairs and ladders and tables and kendo sticks. So that's, that there's nothing left. Let's, so let's I, I'm guessing it. you both are big fans of ECW then. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I Favorite love Favorite match I ever seen, Sabu and Rhino. Hardcore Newburgh Street Fight. Uh-huh. That was in Newburgh, too? That, that was at the, uh, the Armory down in Newburgh. Big wow. time Shout wrestling. out to Newburgh. Yeah. Shout out Newburgh. Hometown. Um, Do you have... Uh, Cody, or for you, Tim, um, do you guys have any favorite people that you've gotten to see live? Any ones that you were really happy to be able to say that, yo, I, you know, I've got to experience seeing this person in person? In person? Definitely didn't get to see Goldberg live, but I did see Hogan live. So that was pretty yeah, cool. Nice. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that's real yeah, cool. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, ironically... Was he uh, in the ring or no? He was like just doing autographs and stuff off to the side, like after the matches. I was like, I saw a steamboat. Yeah. Oh, but he wasn't in ring. He wasn't in ring or anything. I mean, he was talking on the mic, but okay, but not, still not wrestling. Yeah, yeah, it's still nice to but see still. him. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, oh, so that happened, and ironically, a little bit later on in life, when I moved to uh, Houston in uh, 07, I got to actually see Mick Foley. Oh, that's like cool. I was working at a grocery store and he just like swags in. I'm just like, nice. Is that Mick Foley? Yeah. Was and he wearing any he, of this? He was gear? wearing a dude yeah. love shirt. You know what I mean? Oh, that's funny. Awesome. Yeah. Right out in my car currently, there's a autographed copy of Have a Nice Day. What? Yeah. That's not bad. Damn, you're that's the true dope. fan if you have that. Well, it was lent to me to read, but still. Oh, okay. You got to give it back. That's cool. What about you, Cody? Oh. Uh, 
I don't know. There's so many because it's like I've seen like NXT house shows, uh, basically AEW light Northeast wrestling shows. Okay. Just so seeing, you can name drop a few. Seeing people back there back then and now seeing them on TV okay. like titles and stuff. I'm glad I'm seeing Darby Allen doing big things. I like that. Yeah. Um, let's see who else Penta. I first seen him live. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. watching him on TV now is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still one of the live matches that I've, I think it's the only time I've ever seen them two square up was the first NXT show. I went to seeing uh, Tommaso Ciampa, Against at the time his name was Manny Andrade, but Andrade Almas. Nice. Okay. Those two brought the house down. Yeah, that, that was the greatest awesome match, match. The, and that was the very first time you ever heard of Andrade. That's cool. And these are all like house matches, right? So they're not even like yep. necessarily televised. So like one of the best matches I've seen was a dude I never saw on TV, guy I never heard of. Wow. And Did another guy was a fresh face to TV. It might have. St- I think NXT. No, NXT was on the network at that time. That's cool. So it's like a match of two guys that I didn't know was the best match of the night. Okay. It's just how you perform. Right. It's just great. Connect with the crowd. You're in. And I hope you don't fall off once you get in because (laughs) there's a lot of people that come in and they just start, you know, the ego gets to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I like, uh, I got an experience, uh, quite a few, uh, wrestlers and seeing them live as well. Like you guys were talking about, just ones that weren't in Tessa ring. Blanchard. And on the mic, um, you know, we got to experience uh, Sting. Bret Hart. Sting? Oh, Bret Hart. Yes. But they didn't wrestle. They were just on the mic and whatnot. But seeing, actually, uh, also uh, one person I'm a huge fan of uh, that we got to see live or that I did was Paige. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a big fan. I've oh. always been a big fan of Paige. Unfortunately, uh, that? that was in the bad times. Yeah, her rough times. You want to you want to say actually. it a little bit? You look a little. I mean, well, it was yeah. Alberto Del Rio. He's a scumbag. Oh, okay. Yeah. We need not talk more of him. So. All right, let's, let's speak <laughs> less of it. Yeah. So, but also, um, you know, seeing Kenny Omega live was dope. Okay, that Kenny was awesome. Omega? Yeah. Who right now Kenny Omega is the current AEW champion? Which what's that gonna bring? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's a pretty exciting. That's one of them storylines that you're just tied in. You gotta keep watching. What, what? Mm-hmm. You don't know. So should I should I be following in on this? Because I'm com- like I haven't been in for at least six or seven years. I tell everyone. I recommend to everybody who who says that also. Yo, give AEW a chance. Why on a Wednesday night, eight o'clock? Watch one episode of AEW and tell me that you're not going to be blown away by some of these things that you see. All right. I would say there's yeah. probably a lot of familiar names and faces if you used to watch AEW. Okay. They got Arn Anderson in the mix, Tully Blanchard's okay. in the mix. Okay. Well, yeah, we can go with this real quick. We'll yeah, bring yeah, it up it. that um, uh, on December 2nd, Sting made his debut to Sting? AEW. Yeah, uh, their winter back. is coming? Yeah. That was a great... How, uh, how old is Sting? Sting is up there at age, though. I'm willing to bet like mid fifties or whatnot. But crazy thing that I heard though about his contract is that he signed. It's a performance contract. He signed two years. A performance contract. Care to explain it? Makes you think he's going to be in ring performing sometime. Going to be in ah, action. That's what you mean. But in his contract though, like I felt like he had said or I heard that he doesn't want to take bumps, which oh, I, don't I don't understand about that. how that's going to work because I didn't know about that. Yeah. Is I it really... is it is bumps like a big over encompassing thing. He doesn't want to have moves done to him where he's got to, you know, get hurt. Basically, <laughs> you know a bump I mean? is when you receive a move. Okay, so when you receive damage, yeah, or you take any, a move. Any kind of thing, yeah. yeah. So basically, he doesn't want to wrestle. <laughs> kind of like from what uh, this is news <laughs> to me, but from what Josh is saying, it sounds like maybe he wants to dole out some moves but not get them back in return. Yeah, that's just, oh, he, I thought what I had heard. I just want to swing the bat, and that's it. Yeah, so it, it's, it's going to be. Huh. Um, we'll see what happens. You I'm know, invested watch, either way. Yeah, you got to watch are, AEW. Are we? So, we have to watch it. Yeah, man. Um, TNT every Wednesday, unless basketball boots it. <laughs> which I don't even know anything about that, so. <laughs> nah, they ain't going to do that. They did it to us once. <laughs> yeah, so. I guess question for both of you guys real quick. Um, The state of wrestling now, the future, you guys. Okay. 
cool with it. I think it's heading in the right direction. I'm entertained and I'm locked in, so they're doing something right. But like I said, I'll follow certain wrestlers. I want to know what certain individuals all are up to. I'll see what's what's this guy up to. I want to see what's going on with that. What's what's Pete Dunn up to with NXT? You know what's going on over here. What's going on in NWA? Okay. Uh-huh. So for me, I actually I just really want to say that I haven't been into it for a while. So I would want to watch maybe for a good month or two or even like three months to see if it is something that i'm still all about you know what i mean Mm -hmm. yeah i guess i guess i need to really be like recommitted into it though but a lot of people from what i've been reading a lot of people just hate what vince mcmahon has been doing to wwe like he's apparently he's like a cancer to you know this thing that he built up more or less just uh, super old school in his old school ways. Um, okay, so. Yeah. Wrestling, like, uh, when you compare it to any sport nowadays, all sports, um, okay. the way that they play the game, the type of athlete, everything, it's totally different from how it was back in the right, day. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So he's still, I mean, Vince being an older guy, I'm assuming that he, you know, his views on things are still locked in on the things that worked back then. Yeah, but he's got to learn how to evolve, though. I mean, it's like Triple H has done that, and that's that's what he did. Say, to NXT, NXT is so great, right? Because Triple H has the control over that, and right? NXT is fire. So why can't they just give the reins over to Triple H? I mean, he's family. You could always just be the be the old man on the side saying, I mean, hey, "Maybe you should do this," but let this man take over. Well, he's the man. Yeah, the Mick man. Yeah. I, guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I understand it, but at the same time, if it's a family business. Yeah. Although Triple can, H is the family. I don't yeah, know if it just, can, it's just, it, it's in the name. But that's why they call it like the patriarch. You could be the patriarch. You could still be the big man. Just be the big man over there and let Triple H, you know. Maybe he just ain't ready. I guess. Yeah. But for all those haters and whatnot that are, you know, that are displeased, they're not feeling the wwe vibe anymore that's why aew is a great option i was gonna say wwe i was just, I just felt kind of bored okay so yeah. who runs aew if i could throw that out there tony khan owner of uh was it jacksonville jaguars correct wow okay big name they got money okay yeah they got big money, money. For sure yeah yeah so yeah but uh got uh cody rhodes some dusty Rhodes. uh-huh he's a uh, vice president Mm-hmm. Executive okay. vice president, and then mm-hmm. a couple other uh, big wrestlers are executive vice presidents. Kenny Omega. Ken- oh wow! Okay. Yep. Uh, the Young, Young Bucks. Bucks. There. Yep. Okay. Which is cool because they were all a group of friends and whatnot, and they decided to kind of they had this idea of you know that was just it. They wanted they wanted wrestling. to make something different. Was yeah. it is it was it really necessarily different? Because I remember when they started talking about it. And of course, you had the naysayers saying, oh, what you doing and everything. But I could actually tell that there was like a little bit of a presence like, oh, my God, they have these guys together. Maybe this is going to, you know, be the next WWE or the next WWF or whatever you want to call it. Well, from what I get out of it, they're giving a lot of the wrestlers their own creative freedom, whereas Ah. in WWE, they don't got that. They've got writers and scripts to follow and memorize. WWE, it's what do you think will work good with this? Yeah. That might not work. That's a little too far, but do everything else you want to do. Right. You know, they got the, they get a lot more freedom to build their character and along with that, their storyline. So how does this, I mean, if they're given that much freedom, because, you know, once it was exposed that WWE was like mostly a script, it's like, okay, this is like a story I could follow. But to be given like so much free reign, is there like certain limitations that they can't go beyond or do they are they fully given like the reins over controlling their character and their character arcs and everything yeah i think they're given full control that's the biggest thing that i think that they wow. uh, enjoy that well these... they gotta pull the reins sometimes right but okay. they have it's as like, any company would it's right, like right, right. night and day compared to wwe and aew the amount of freedom that um, they have to be able to come up with their own storylines and whatnot. That's the biggest thing that I hear, too, on all these different wrestling interviews and whatnot, is that the AEW wrestlers um, love the creative freedom to do what they want. And then they know that um, if it works, that's awesome. 
and if it doesn't work, try and again. It sucks. Yeah, you try again, but you it's cool because you got no one to blame but yourself. Okay. You know, because it's not someone's not handing you a script and saying, Here, say this. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? And and you could read it and be like, uh, bro, that, I, that I would not say any of this ever in real life. Right, right, right. Whereas in AEW, it may be just like a bullet point of, you know, say this in your way. Right. Oh, okay. You know? I can understand that. So then they have the creative freedom to to roll with it, and that's the biggest thing that I hear. You know that they um, that they love about you know about AEW, AEW about versus like having a script and having to follow a specific thing. Right. All right. Let's see. Real quick, uh, Cody. Yo. Four sided ring or six? I, I'm. Going with four, but it's like I've seen a few good matches. I know I have with the six, but I got to go four. Right on. Definitely four. Tim? I would have to say four. I'm more used to four than than six, but I'm starting to see six a lot more. It, it seems agree. strange. Yeah. yeah. TNA uh, did the six back in the day. and Not a fan. I started yeah. watching TNA when they had it, and I was like, ah, it just feels weird. And then they went to four, and I was like, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Intergender wrestling. I'm about it. Story's got to mm-hmm. be right, though. Okay. It's got to have a good story behind it, but I'm definitely behind it. Yeah, I think that's a growing topic. Um, I know Jordan Grace has had some good matches. Tessa Blanchard's had some good matches. Yep. Even China back in the day, she's had good matches. China has always had good matches. Yeah. See, Rest I, in peace to her. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. If it's done right, uh, I'm with it, you know. Um, Tim, either way. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. good. I'm good for it. I'm good. I'm always good for any sort of progression in like any of the things that I like. So I'm all for it. Definitely yeah. different. I saw um a few weeks ago on TNA, Sammy Callahan. I saw him um pile drive Katie Forbes. Oh or, yeah, yeah. And and because we saw Katie Forbes live. Are they trying to build a match between them two or? Um, I didn't see that. No, uh, he was. Um, he had beef with Rob Van Dam. Oh, but like, oh she, so she, she was like was the intermediary. In the yeah. yeah. He oh, just I hate kinda, that. But like, it was, <laughs> it was crazy. Oh when no. He gave her that pile driver. He's like, get out I the way. I wonder if they are gonna do that though, because Impact was the one that was doing a lot of. Because I know like Sammy Callahan and Tessa Blanchard was a real big intergender uh-huh. match. And that was where Jordan Grace did her thing too. TNA. Or uh, that's where she me. at. She, that's yeah. where she's at now. Yeah. Could either of you see like this form of wrestling like really hit the big leagues? Can you see it like being like televised live and Well, it's getting more popular now, but a lot of people still frown upon it. Okay. Is it like the same old tropes that keep people frowning upon this type of thing? I mean, there's always going to be maybe a certain group of people that are just not cool with seeing males um you know, lay in the females right. like that. You know, and a lot of people say believability. Of course, she's not going to be able to flip this. Of course, she's going to walk all over, no problem. Mm. Right. But like that's what I'm saying with storyline. If you put like a, a female that's like an awesome technician in this, like, like China, a, that's yeah. going to. She was pretty powerful too. Exactly. But exactly. If like you put somebody in that's going to trip them up a lot and be able to tie them up and tap oh, them out, okay. possibly. You know, that's. There you go. You wouldn't think those are like the like scumbag types of moves. Like you're not actually like grappling with somebody, but you're always like timing yourself to try and trip them up or you know strategy. It's strategy. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm about There's it. Different kinds of wrestlers. People that are just you know they'll run and gun like Rambo all over the place. But right. then there's some people that they'll wait for their moment. They'll hit a submission here, wait for something, and then know. do something there. Yeah, it's I a can game. It's it. all how you play the game. Yeah. Exactly. Last question. Um, let's hit it real quick. Past or present, uh, most overrated wrestler? Shit, I can throw mine out. I think Lex Luger is most, most overrated. overrated. <laughs> yeah. Every, I mean, come on, man. I mean, the guy, he, looked, he was built. He looked great. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But he didn't really do much of anything. So, But people are always talking him up, though. So, yeah, right, that's my right. pick right there. Okay. You got one yet, Cody? I do. I don't want to say it, though. I'm going to get in a lot of trouble with a lot of people. <laughs> well, you still got to say it, though. The Undertaker. Oh, oh okay. Ooh, Never mind. Yo, get out of here. <laughs> get him out of here. The Undertaker. <laughs> Most overrated. Most overrated. Why is that? 
I just he, I feel like he only got like four moves. Well, I mean, he's basic though. Yeah. Uh, uh, See, I would have I would have been iconic. okay. I would have been okay with you saying that he's underrated or he's overrated. But the like, longer he he's been in, I got another one too, and I'm gonna get in trouble around too. What's that? Who's that? Bret Hart. I like that one, Hart. You know, okay, I can <laughs> I can understand <laughs> that. I can actually understand that though. What about you, Josh? Like, do you think uh, do you think you agree with what he's saying? No. Uh, I mean, no one does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Everyone's choices is they own. You know, like for me, this is what you know. My most overrated wrestler, I think, in my opinion, was Goldberg. <gasps> wow, you killed me. I, oh, even no. though he had that crazy. Streak, I'm I'm slain, bro. I'm I slain. Know. Oh, look, and then they dap into, <laughs> oh, no. I told you, you about the streak You've before. slain me. You've slain me. I know. He had a streak. Whatever. It was crazy, bro. But, like, yo, Goldberg had, like, uh, I don't know. The man like, was all over the place. He would come moves. in and just do his business and be out. <laughs> any move, someone would try to clothesline him and knock him down. He'd literally fall and, like, bounce yeah. right back yeah. up. <laughs> you know he's, what like what the, what? he's like the immovable object. He would just come in, do his thing, spear, call it a day, and peace out. I will say when I was little, I was like, oh, when he first come out in his pyro, he's standing there, I'll spark, and then he breathed out the smoke. I was right. like, oh, that's sick. That's sick, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but he was all business. He was just all business. And it's actually kind of funny because I would usually play Goldberg towards uh, – um, Stone Cold and play them off each other. Like Stone Cold yeah. was like the like the opposite. Like he was played up to be the opposite. But yo, you. I mean, I don't know because you could even. I mean, I should be careful with this because I love Stone Cold too. Like he was some of my best memories that I have of wrestling involved Stone Cold. Okay. Uh, what a cool redneck man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. But um, it's one of the coolest boy. His. Uh, I mean, his move set wasn't very uh, broad either. I mean, it there was very limited. Yeah. So, but but that stunner was awesome. Right. Mm. And he had like he had energy for days. <laughs> so like the you attitude, put him down. The the attitude. attitude. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, most underrated. I mean, this would probably be. I mean, like any at for, any point in time. Sure. Because I think okay. Bam Bam Bigelow was pretty underrated. Yeah. That's a good choice. Yeah. Bam Bam. Bam Bam was good. He was good. I like Bam Bam. He was good. He was good, yeah. and he was a struggle artist, too, and he would just make it happen in his own way, too. It's pretty local, too, Asbury yeah. Park. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Jersey. Uh, also, crazy dude to get a tattoo on his head like that. You exactly. Know what I'm saying? Bam Bam. Yes, well, sir. I mean, if I lost my hair, I might pull something drastic like that, too. <laughs> oh, I mean, man. at that point, your hair ain't growing back. So let's just go with it. Hmm. All right, so underrated. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to keep it, because, I mean, there's so many. I don't know. I'm going to keep it easy and go with um, people, like, more recent right now. I would say an underrated wrestler, uh, EC3. Okay. And I am going to use a local talent as well, because I think he is the best unsigned wrestler. That's out there is JT Dunn. JT Dunn. Underrated okay. man. Shout outs. Absolutely. When do you think he's going to get his chance finally? I don't know. I'm waiting. I can't wait though because like a lot of these people, like I said, a lot of these people that have been on these Northeast shows and whatnot, they do end up moving on somewhere. Okay. They've been yeah, living off the, the local live circuit, you know? Okay. Do you think there's a like there's a career for never really getting live and just being local? Do you think you can make it doing it that way? Well, I mean, wrestling's pretty hot around here, so a lot of the local boys do pretty well. Hale right. Collins, he's well known. I've been on a walk down in Fishkill and see somebody wearing the Now shirt. Okay. Oh, Hale Collins and Now. You know, Damn, so a lot like... of them are doing good. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be hype if somebody was like, oh, I'm a big fan. That's tight, man. I mean, yeah. rep it. You have to, I feel like you really do still have to rep your hometown, if, especially if you're going to, like, have enough money behind it to keep it going. Yeah, yeah, one one of the biggest things too is that um with wrestlers and whatnot um they sell a lot of merchandise. Their right. merch is huge, and I heard an interview where the Young Bucks were asked, and they had said, uh, you know, they didn't give a exact number, but they had said it was close to fifty, maybe even a little more of their income comes from merch. From merch, wow, yeah. mm -hmm. okay, which is wild. So like even being a local um 
you know, wrestler and whatnot, if you have t shirts and right. some things to sell, you can right. you can make off well every night, you know. I, I never That's, really even considered it. I was I was I guess I've always considered it as far as how electric can you make the crowd, how many like fans can you put in the seats. I wasn't even thinking about merchandise. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, I think they all get paid a certain amount for okay. coming to be part of the show. And, like, that's it. All their extra money that they can really, uh, you know, it could blow it up. It could blow up. Um, is off their merchandise. It's a big, big part of it. Well, big shit, part let me, of the game. Let me just slide one last question in on it then. How do you feel about, um, because I did read about this as well. How do you guys feel about what uh, WWE has been doing to all of these wrestlers that have like YouTubes, that have like Twitch channels and they have like all of these side channels and they're making money off of it. It seems like Vince or whoever is in charge, they basically said they have to pay that in to WWE. They shut it down. They shut it down. How do you feel about it? I don't agree with it. I guess if you like keep whatever that entity is totally separate from the wrestling, then it shouldn't be a, an issue, which so, a lot of it is like Twitch video gaming things, right? Right, right. But I mean, it's the idea of, oh, it's this person that's actually, you know, that's that entity that's doing this Twitch channel or doing this YouTube channel. And the, But they shut it all down regardless. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm just thinking of like how the company would look at it, how it affects them, which is why I'm thinking I feel like they're not tying their wrestling persona into yeah. it and in most cases they weren't they were just the same person but they're just playing video games but then like tying the whole making money off of it i don't know it's mm-hmm. a lot it's a lot to think about that i've never really like thought about too much i don't know i i would uh, advise you to look it up because i know at least over there uh a lot of these people that decided to do all of these channels they they weren't getting matches they weren't getting booked for matches so this was like the side hustle that they were doing and come to find out a lot of them, the side hustle was really actually good, mm-hmm. you know, cause people can just donate. I've heard a lot of them make a lot better money off of their, right. their Twitch or their YouTube than they have from that. Right. But I guess a lot of it may also be whatever's tied up in their contract. I know they can get uh, some heavy contracts. Okay. But so, I mean, apparently a lot of these people, the, the contracts were pretty light. They just weren't getting matches. Maybe they get like one every so often or so. Which, I mean, I if, if you're not getting a lot of televised time and you got a lot of, like, off-air time on your hands, I don't see why not if it's not interfering with wrestling, you know? Right. What do you think? So, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm being in that leash, being on uh, that WWE leash, you know, with that contract, there's a lot of things they keep you, have a lot of things that uh, they tell you that you can and can't do. Right. You know, it's a lot more... Uh, strict i guess okay. than other places so are you okay with that's that that's part of it i mean i don't know like cody had mentioned it's not something that i really thought too much about i mean if people want to do what they do to make a little extra you know uh, on the side i i'm i don't stand in the way of that but it's like a do, second job yeah you yeah. know so uh cody yes most underrated wrestler Go with another local boy. You know him as probably one of the most underrated wrestlers of all time as well. Had a massive losing streak. Jake Manscout Manning. <laughs> Shout okay. out but, uh, Manscout. Let me see. Let me think of a tweet TV one real quick just because I know you don't know a lot of the no. local guys. Underrated. From what I've heard, he's kind of an asshole in person, but I've always kind of liked Hardcore Holly. Oh, wow, not bad. It always seemed like he Yo. never made it to the, like he would always get yeah. right there and then yeah. break a bone. And then break a bone or something Somebody happens. land on him and break a bone. Wow, shout outs to hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's just real quick, but I can keep going. Definitely. Underrated, overrated. I can th- that's what I like about wrestling. It's it, I'm, it's always revolving. There's always something new. So I can always give you more. Oh no. Hardcore Holly part of the uh the attitude era. Yes. Great time. I have a slam big part of it. I have heard a lot of things too, uh, in real wow. life and whatnot. Interviews and other things about him and how his character in real life and he is um a lot of people uh agree with that vibe. Okay. <laughs> about him. But but if you can separate the artist from the art, if they can separate their beliefs from the ring. Right. Give something that just gives somebody some kind of enjoyment on some level. Right, right, right. I don't right. want to be all political or any kind of anything like that. So <laughs> that's all good, bro. It's all good. 
All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. But before we go, uh, we want to thank Cody for coming on. And Thanks for having me. Absolutely, yes, man. Thank, thank you. you. This was cool. It's always um, fun talking about wrestling. Absolutely. You want to shout out anyone or anything in particular? Uh, I, I know you're not really into the whole social media thing, so um, you have anything to plug? Well, if I was going to plug anything, it'd be live wrestling, but with COVID going on and everything shut down, I don't know how things are running, but look up highspotsnetwork.com. They got a lot of shows, Northeast Wrestling. Uh, definitely keep checking back on this podcast, see what they got going on. Actually. Appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate it's all it. relative. Yes, sir. Shout out. Shout outs. All right. You want to hit them up with your social? Yeah. So two socials for right now. The first one is... Uh, Tune Day 2017, and that's on Instagram. And uh, Twitter, it is Retro Show. Right on. And that's S-H-O. Right on. Um, everyone can find me at Josh underscore Toth 3. That's my Instagram. Okay. My Facebook is Joshua Toth. Um, we want to thank uh, our editor, Deirdre. Your skills are shining. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We also want to uh, thank our day oneers. You yeah, know, shout outs to the day oneers. Absolutely, yeah. as always. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you. Thank you for listening and spreading the word. Mm -hmm. um, continue to subscribe and share. Spread the word, please. You know, yeah. but um, we see you and we love you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, remind all our listeners to find us on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Anchor. Please subscribe, follow, share. Please. Give it that five-star rating. Bless that five-star, please. Or catch that five-star five star frog, frog splash. splash. Yeah! Wow, swagged in on it. Look okay. at that! Yeah. Please, please continue to support the podcast. We'd really appreciate that. Great job, my man. All right, thanks. Another one down. Another one down, brother. Um, Thank you for coming. Like yeah. I said, thanks again for having yes, me. Sir. Tell your friends. You gotta dap it. Absolutely. All right, everyone out there, have a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Peace. Bye. Peace out. Hey,